Welcome back viewers of AVG News. We are back again with our political analysis. And today we're joined again in this analysis or in this program by uh, United States-based political analyst, uh, Dr. Zeb Maxwell Shumba. Welcome, Doc. Uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate being here. Thank you. Uh, today, we, I want us to talk about the 2023 elections. You know that there are elections next year in Zimbabwe. And uh, we want to hear your views. How do you see this uh, panning out? We've, we've, we've got more than 100 political parties that are competing. We've previously had a, two, uh, a, a bipolar system in our politics whereby there is the winner and then there's the main opposition. There's nothing in between. Do you see this playing out again next year? Yeah, of course, because in politics, there's money. So where there's money, uh, people from parties, so don't discount that. <laughs> but let's talk about the essence of the 2023 elections. And I, I know we are short of time, so we're going to the meat and bones of it. Yes. Uh, our elections since 1980 have been driven by ZANU P. Yeah. The people in ZANU attach their ruling ZANU to their particip participation in the war. So they feel entitled to rule Zimbabwe. So they're going to elections as a formality. All elections except 2008 the first before runners up, it been a formality. ZANU fortifies so that it doesn't lose. <laughs> so 2023, there's no difference. You can actually put, like I'm doing this, this 2018 and this 2023, and they will do like this. <laughs> uh, why is that so? It's because a, the problem is in Zimbabwe. The opposition which attracts resources and funding has no clue on how to remove ZANU. And those who have clues and ideas on how to remove ZANU are not even considered. They have ideas, nobody listens to them. There is a crisis in Zimbabwe in which I don't know when people wake up, probably 2023 will be a wake up call you don't do the same things and expect a different result. That's the best definition of stupidity, right? Yeah. Yes. So right now, okay, let, let me get into this. ZANU PF has made friends with dictatorships like North Korea, who know how to stay in power. They put in place ZEC, and with the ZEC, they, they were strategically able to constitute it so that there is a modicum of fairness at the commissioner level. And then at the technical people who run the elections are, are people who come from the state's six, uh, security agencies. And the people who run the elections are the people who ensure that ZANU remains in power. And then they have the registrar where they channel IDs, which belong to people like us who are in the diaspora. I have first I know that. So you have the registrar, you have the exact technical committee uh, doing all the data work behind the scenes. And then you have the commissioner giving the modicum of transparency. And you expect a different result. And then you have an opposition which thinks running colorful rallies is the way to remove ZANU, speaking good English and ranting nonstop. You know, think that, that alone is where our problem is. Because when they rant, when they have these rallies, they attract resources. Yes. But they have no clue on what it takes to remove ZANU. Uh, just while you are there, Doc, uh, you, you've spoken, I think you've raised this about three times, that these guys don't have a clue now to remove ZANU. 
Uh, can you give us a hint on what is needed for Zimbabweans to get rid of ZAN? Thank you. At the core is identity, is Africans. So is Zimbabwe is African. When you run with no ideology, you can't rally the whole country to your cause. Robert Mugabe failed to unite Zimbabwe because he failed to build a nation. He built a country, but he failed to build a nation. And thus, after his reign, we are divided. I, I'm glad, Mko, I speak with you. You are developed, I'm sure. But how many of us don't speak to each other just because you are shown in the middle. That's Mugabe's legacy, right? Mugabe had his strange ideology. We need identity. Who are we? And who are we? Yes, who are we? We, we are African. They say a tree without roots, a, a tree without roots does not last, right? Yes. A, a people with no culture is just like that tree without roots. So as Zimbabweans, do we have something called a common culture? Should we have one? And if we should, how does it look yes. like? We do. We are Africans. We came from the same place. We are Africans. We believe in the same things, although we differ here and there, but essentially in our culture, we say respect your mother and father. These are your first God. But today you hear people calling somebody else Papa, who is not blood related to them. And then we start going to Jerusalem, thinking that in Israel, that's where solutions for Zimbabwe are. When in Zimbabwe, we have in Jelele, in Bulawai, we have so many sacred places in Zimbabwe. When we go back to those, that's the essence of why we are here like as a nation. We've abandoned our own culture. Oh, Zimbabwe is a unique country. Zimbabwe is a unique country. And I will tell you, I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. It is sacred places which I know I visited. But when we desecrate those sacred places and we start calling them demons, and we started calling people who are not related to us papas, people, other people's ancestors as our own ancestors, then even if an opposition wins, there will still be a crisis. There is a crisis on the bubble of identity. Yes. So it, if we have an identity, we will go as one into the election. During the war, I will tell you, Yes. Even though Zapu and Z Zanu disagreed on, funda on fundamentals on how to prosecute the war, but they were agreed on Africanism. They did the same things which powered them to victory. Until opposition understands how Zanu defeated the colonialists, what, what was the essence? What drove that? We will still be talking of opposition because people like us, with ideas are not listened to. What makes that? Which nation does not listen to good ideas? On this earth, ideas power nations, but in our nation, we don't value ideas. That's quite interesting talk. Uh, now, you're bringing up an interesting issue of uh, our traditions and our African religion. And you mentioned this, uh, the, the, the period of the war, I'll remember yes. that Joshua Nkomo, I live, my rural area is just a walking distance from the Njelele Shrine, by the way. Wow. Nkomo oh, used to go is. there. I know that he used to go there and I know the importance of that, especially during the liberation struggle. Having read books again, I know about the Zanla and their Chaminuka spirits and stuff. So yeah. do you think, or in a way, are you saying that unless and until Zimbabweans begin to value their Africanness, there is no way forward for us. That's true. Yes. We are falling winds. All these hula balloons, big rallies, music, it's hot air. The essence is on our identity as Africans. Yes. Then when we start talking, 
there is this young generation which need to be educated that you cannot continue to be led astray. You can be given beer, you can be given music, but who are you? Yeah. Who are you? So does this then explain ZANU-PF's uh, affinity with uh, African spirits and these indigenous churches, like Skuma Postor, you see them going there every, towards every election, you hear them talking about spirit mediums and we ridicule them. Can this be their lasting power? Yes, because there is one thing, there's one thing you need to know. When you sit back in a strategy room, the first thing you need to know is how is your opposition, how is your enemy doing it? Zanu PF goes to every chief because that's what they were doing during the war. During the war, when they were sending a small groups of armed a, personnel, they were asking to go and look for the traditional leader. And then they will identify the traditional Shikiro. And then they will be set, they will set bases there, guided by those leaders. Zanupi have never abandoned that. It explains why Oposian cannot win rural area. Because Zanupi is tied to the traditionalism. I want to challenge you. If you go on YouTube, there Please. is a, a, a musician, a late musician, his name is Tinechi Kupo. Tinechi Kupo sang liberation war songs. And Zanu PF went and built a mausoleum for him. And everything was all traditional. I want, I want to challenge you. I will send you the link. Okay. So that you know what I'm talking about. And then they had Nick Mangwana there. Nick Mangwana was there, there was the chief, and there was the MP. What do you expect when opposition comes? Yeah. Telling you, telling them that their, their salvation is in Israel. <laughs> so uh, now, where does this, now you're bringing in uh, a different perspective, where does then this leave the allegations of, rig of rigging by Zanu PF? Yes. Zanu PF rigs and also opposition rigs itself. That's, that's a dangerous competition. That's a dangerous mixture. Zanu PF rigs because when you go to rural areas like Mash Central, Mash East, Murewa Uzumba, Maraba Fungwe, yes. Mash West, the, what, what is common in those is they are very traditional. Yes. They are very traditional. Mm -hmm. Zanipi, of course, to the chiefs, goes to the head headmen, and knows all the shikiros. And it creates its own shikiros. It buys shikiros <laughs> who say nonsense in support of Zanipi's agenda. And then when you, when, when you try to raise a candidate there, no one is willing to take up. So you have polling stations with no opposition. So what do you expect? You were rigged way, way before because you did not understand how to penetrate that area. And you, go and you go to a township and you have all these people in your, in your party colors, in your head, in your head, in your head. no, you're not. Yeah. And then how then is Zanupia failing on the governance front, especially the economy of Zimbabwe. How then would you explain their total failure if there is so much in touch? Of course, you've already mentioned that they buy their own security, which means that some of this stuff is even made up. But how then are they, are they failing in running the economy? Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I want to say this. In, yes. in our traditional culture, uh, just like in everything, else, they are schemas. Number one, they are, they are schema shikiros. Yes. They are people who use black magic for, for evil purposes. Zanuki of stay in power is no longer blessed by the nation. They are using all these magic, those people like Romba. Yeah. If I will say this one, I want to tell, say that. 
they use the Mishonga Yekutimarambuari power so that they remain in power because they have, number one, they've understood, they've tasted the power of money. They have tested power. They have made networks in our region. We were in Yerasim with Mugabe and ED. They looted. They made networks with the corrupt people in Yerasim. They know that as long as they're in power, their lives and their fabulous lives is first world. They don't care about you. Our slogan is Nikalanu Pandonik, Alantu Elizwe Elizwe Alant. Yes. They are not that. So the, their failure to, to govern is precisely because they don't care about the people, they care about themselves. And our country is rich, our country is everything to make it first world. It needs people like me, it needs people like you who think outside the box with critical mind to drive this, but they don't. They, they want what we call low hanging fruits. If an investor comes, I want gold. They say, oh, give me 20,000 and we give you mineral rights. And they get the 20,000, they pocket and the guy goes loot the gold. But they already have their money. So that, that's all they care. And what then will it take for the gods to destroy ZANU-PF in your view? What it takes is, number one, every Zimbabwean, and I want to challenge every Zimbabwean on this. Let's talk about our identity, who are we? We will find each other and talk. We will find each other. There is, I want to introduce you to a gentleman who has come up with a noble, noble idea. He's branding wine with totem. And on the wine bottle, there is the history of the totem. You will find out that the Mele Shonas have the same roots. Yes. South Africans and the Mele and Shonas have the same roots. That clears xenophobia. We need as Zimbabweans first to find our identity. When people like me speak, people need to follow up, Doc, what we're talking about. Yes. How can we move towards finding our identity? I don't want, would you think your father, your own father, Paul, will be happy hearing you calling Makandua Papa? Are you related to Makandua? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. You've already mentioned the need for us to unite and find each other, <laughs> but also earlier on, you spoke about Robert Mugabe and his divide and rule tactics. One of those divide and rule tactics resulted uh, in Kukura Hundi. Do you think it is still possible for Zimbabweans to find one another, especially the two so-called uh, monolithic, monolithic tribes, Ndebele and Shona, is it still possible? What will it take? Because for as long as Kukura Hundi is still out there, unresolved, do you think it's going to be possible for us to find one another? Yes. Kukura Hundi need to be resolved. If, if, if people are listening to me, in Matebele land. Every father, every child deserves closure. They need to know what happened to their parents, they need to their sister, to their brother. There is no closure. Until we give closure to those who died, there's never going to be peaceful in the very society. They always have these questions, but you did this to us, but you did this to us. Then with that, some people have to be held accountable, even because forgiveness comes after accountability. Forgiveness comes after someone and says, we're sorry. Gukura Hundi can be a uniter. And that's where I stand. We need closure on that. Even those people who send children to war, when they come back, they give the parents closure. They tell them the circumstances, what led to the uh, death of their child. Yes. Matabelele is all that. And it's people like you, Paul, who does not see 
tribal life. People like me who do not see tribal life, who should be at, for, at, at the forefront on platforms speaking about identity, we are one. The, the, during Gukura Wundi, not every Shona participated. It was Mukabe, who was the commander in chief, who sent an army, which unfortunately was Shona, Shona Nice. But Shona have suffered under Mugabe. You know, Talent Mapika was set on fire. Yes. The, the driver to Mugabe Shangri was set on fire on, in a car. My own brother nearly died, was tortured. And to somebody recognized him and said, oh, we know this person and they stopped. And they dumped him by the roadside. In the Mashona Lake. Yes. But bodies were dumped in villages, the same way they, it was done in Matabele. Mugabe's regime was atrocious, was cruel. And it needs to be talked about. There's no, that's the, some of the folly for the opposition to just embrace Mugabe without addressing those issues he did. Yes, yes, yes. In the same way we talk about in opposition, someone steals money and comes back and be the VP. We, we cannot be a society which does not hold people accountable. We need to address Kukura Wundi. And I want to tell them, coach, there are people who can be catalysts. People like you are catalysts. Because you don't see the division between tribes. You see us as Africans. That's where the identity comes. And then, then my look, brother. Then looking, looking at the opposition that we have, you've already uh, dismissed their ideological leanings. But now this issue of these divisions, which I must admit, are drawing us further back instead of pulling us forward. Uh, we are having uh, the same trend that is happening in ZANU-PF, that people are elected to position based on their tribes, happening in the mainstream opposition. We have smaller opposition parties, like for example, ZAPU, where you know that for you to be president, you must be developed first. You cannot be the president if you are Shona. If you are Shona, you would always be a vice president. Then we have other opposition parties again, which are now calling for the for cessation of Matebelele. Do you think that <laughs> this doesn't, I mean, do you think it's still possible for Zimbabweans to find one another in this kind of atmosphere? Yes. Here's what I'm going to say. It may be controversial. Yes. Traditional leaders play a role. We are Africans. We are Africans. I don't, it doesn't matter what people say. I've been here in the USA for 22 years. Yes. But I'm not American. I'm still Zimbabwe. Right? Yes. Traditional leaders, real with clean hands, who are not bought. When they take a Shona in Endeavor to Jalele, and you are set down in that sacred side, uh, shrine, and you are told by those who speak through our ancestors what we need to do. Those two who live, the Shona and the Vele, when they come out, they realize they're one. When we go around the country with people who tell us our history, our past, before Mugabe divide and rule, because we need people who lead us back before Mugabe divide and rule. During the war, I was in Gweru. Gweru supported Zanla, supported Zipra. On election day, I was in Gweru. Yes. We celebrated the win together. I went to Zipra meetings. I went to, uh, uh, sorry, Zabu meetings. I went to Zanu meetings. Yes. And it was Mugabe, it was Mugabe who divided us. And he has to be held accountable for that. So we need leaders, seniors, who lead the children back to pre-Mugabe. 
And we then come into today. How do we get to where we hate each other? And then we realize, no, there was someone who is no longer there who made us fight. Otherwise, there's no reason for us to fight. Is there a reason for you to fight me, Ruko? <laughs> no, there isn't. No, there isn't. Just because I'm sure. <laughs> and I fight you, I hate you just because you are the man. You start talking about secession. Then when you start of secession, then you are bringing all the things people say, <laughs> well, where did you even come from yourself? You want to see it. You're opening a can of worms, which we don't need. Let's focus on our identity. Who are we? Yeah. And then, Who are we? And then back to 2023 talk, um, yeah. you've already said that we are going, likely going to get what we got in 2018. Yeah. So in other ways, you are saying that there will only be two parties in contention. The rest are just out, I mean, insignificant in this election. Unless something changes. Number one, people in the rural areas put importance to, to the future, their own future and the future of their children. Yes. Number two, they start asking, people start asking questions. The, the opposition, which people are placing their hope on. And when people start asking questions, they will discover the middle road. But the middle road is the one with the solution. When is that solution come? We don't know, it depends on the people. I cannot force myself on the people. I know I have solution, but I cannot force myself on the people. The people have to ask questions. They, the first question they ask is, who else on this planet does not value ideas except Zimbabweans? Speaking English, you, you know, here, I had a president who barely spoke English <laughs> because he was Japanese. But everyone else here was American, spoke English, and nobody cared. He was still the president. People don't make presidents because they, they are eloquent. Yes. People make presidents because they, they have substantively ideas which are transformative. We have not seen them in opposition. People go to rallies to, because within these economic conditions, when you are told there is free music, you go because it's a pastime. People should go to ask and listen from ideas and ask the fundamental questions. What is your ideology? Yeah, uh, but somebody, somebody says publicly, we don't have an ideology and we don't care about ideology and we live with that. Since when, what type of, what have we become as a people? Uh, did, did you see the feedback that we got from the last video that we did from the last interview? No, I have not. Tell um, me. There are many people who agreed with what you were saying, sure. but the obvious comments also came up that no, no, don't tell us that, don't be negative, we want to remove ZANU PF. So, do you think it is still possible for Zimbabweans to ask leaders of their political parties about ideology and other ideas or to point out the wrongs that they bring forth? Thank you so much. In 2017, if you go to my platform, yes, I said this, there was a demo being called by the World Veterans, calling people and opposition was supporting that. Yes. To remove, to remove Mugabe. And I said, please do not, because this is ZANU 2.0. People did not listen. People said, hey, you, we just want Mugabe go. We will see ahead, but let's move Mugabe. Let's focus on removing Mugabe. What's happening today? They're crying. And now I'm telling them that you need to ask the fundamental question about your opposition so that you don't repeat 2017. And you are telling me, let's do the same thing. 
Let's remove from ED now. To move to Kumber things happen. They say, oh, no, no, we cannot do that. We have a task. We have a job to do to educate the people. The more people start speaking up, the more people start saying, nations are developed when questions are asked. And those who are being challenged have an obligation to explain themselves, not to insult. Whenever someone insults back to a critique, it means they don't have it. It means the critique is right. When you see all those insults, it means I was right. Yes, yes. They don't have anything to, because if I'm wrong, right? In 2018 came the famous V11. If I'm wrong, bring the V11. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to show the world that I'm wrong, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but when uh, you resort in south, it means I'm, I'm, I'm right. Yes, uh, that's interesting talk. Uh, we are left with five minutes. Talking about the 2017, I remember I interviewed you about the coup. I was writing for yeah. the Christian Science Monitor, and you told me about a triage. But we'll talk about yeah. that when we review ZANU, when we, in, in the next program, when we talk about ZANU PF specifically. So we yeah. are left with five minutes. Uh, can you round up? Tell us, tell Zimbabweans what they need to do going to 2023, and also your prediction of the figures, maybe the percentages of what the main opposition will get in ZANU-PF. Okay, right now, as we stand, what Zimbabwe need to do, sit back and begin to see what things are repeat. Rallies are repeat. <laughs> Eloquent people are repeat. So if those repeats did not give us a win, why should we invest in those? Zimbabwe need to sit back and say, we have had you who want to hear others. They will discover people with real strategies to remove ZAN. The real strategy to remove ZAN is one which replicates what ZAN did against me. Yes. ZANU did not have rally against me. Although it used armed weapons, but those armed weapons were mere, merely for protection. They were not deploying to go and fight me. They were deploying to go and educate the masses. And in so they were armed so that they can protect themselves. At most, they had people like Mujibas who would go around look looking if Smith soldiers were nearby. If Smith soldiers were nearby, they would disappear because they, their mission was not to fight Smith soldiers. Their mission was to move from village to village, educating them about the need for independence. Until we get that, people who understand that there is a strategy to go into the rural areas, materialism, which is, we will be armed with identity. Zan was armed with identity. They sang songs about identity, who are we are. Go and play all their songs. They talk about Neada, they talk about Chaminuka. Even Zan Zipra also sang about songs about the, our identity. I know those songs. Yes. Unless we do that, we, they will continue giving this resources to these parties and these people, these politicians, look at their lifestyle. <laughs> They're just using that money for their own lifestyles and pay rally. A rally will cost a lot of money and what do you get? What have they gained with the rallies? Nothing. The last thing I want to say to Zimbabwe, if you want to evaluate, the opposition, especially those who are in power. ZANU-PF is the government. MDC and CCC have got councils. We know it's, it's well documented. ZANU-PF is failed to govern. And it's also well documented that MDCCC has failed to govern cities. If they have the keys to unlock the economy, why can't they use them now to unlock and develop our rallies. 
I, I am from Chituguiza. Chituguiza has become nasty, but it has had MDC mayor and councillor since 2000. Where are those keys? And you want to hand them over. You want to hand them over the keys to government when they failed at council. It's excuse after excuse. If, if they say, we don't have power, so why are you running for council? Why are you there? Where is there if you don't have power? So all this, these are the questions I, I'm posing to Zimbabwe. Yes. Do not be carried by the same things we have done together. We are not children who are given sweets to lick. In the sweet it is, the passive we become. Yes. And in, in the last yes. minute, we are left with a minute. Your sure. prediction in terms of percentages. I, I, I predict as it stands, if Zimbabwe do not wake up, then we win much central, much east, much, much west. So with those three provinces <laughs> with outright line, you can't win the election. You can say whatever you want unless Zimbabweans change. Yes. Start looking at people with a strategy to confront ZANU. ZANU will win those provinces. And the 2018 result will be the same as 2023. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, we'll be with you again, hopefully, next week. Uh, that was, viewers, that was Dr. Zeb Maxwell Shumba. He is a Zimbabwean political analyst based in the United States of America. It was a pleasure to have him here. Doc, thank you very much. Goodbye. Sure. Yeah, be before I go, also, as an analyst, I'm also the president of Zimfest Party. Yes, yes. Which yes. people are not looking at because ideas do not matter in our country at the moment. But yeah. I'm confident they will matter. People will begin to look at us seriously. Hopefully one day. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. We'll talk about oh, this some other day also. Thank you very much.